Okay, now I'm going to show you how to use authorized views and authorized data sets in BigQuery. A view allows you to write a query and then grant access to your users to the results of that query. It's useful if you want to aggregate data because maybe that's complex for your end users or if you want to make sure that your end users are running optimized queries, especially if you have a lot of data. However, the problem with a regular view is that in order for your users to query the view, they have to also have access to the underlying data. And there may be times when you don't want to grant that access because you've got sensitive information. This is not true of authorized views. In an authorized view, the view has access to the underlying data, not the end user. So you can tell your end data where you've got secure information that you'll allow a view to access that information. Then separately, you can grant your users access to the view. This way, you can both aggregate data, optimize the queries, and restrict access to data that you don't want those users to see in the underlying query all at once. So to illustrate this, I'm going to share a use case that I see every day in my work, which is creating authorized views on top of your Google Analytics data. So I'm going to grant Tobias access to the authorized view rather than to the full data set where he might accidentally run poorly optimized queries and access the user identifiers that I don't want him to see. Okay, so jumping into the screen share, I'm going to start by reminding you what access Tobias currently has. So if I go into Tobias's view, I can see here that he's got access to my user data data set and the table in there, but there is nothing else. There's no Google Analytics data and there's no financial data. Back in my main view, I've got everything, financial, Google Analytics, and user. I also think it's useful to remind you that we are sharing the user data by the use of a data set tag. So Tobias has access to any data that has the internal BI team tag on it. Okay, so to create an authorized view, the first thing I'm gonna do is create a view. Now the reason this is such a common use case is because the Google Analytics data is highly denormalized. And so running queries against it can be a little tricky for new users. Um, and also it has data in it that you don't always wanna share Usually what that is, is the user ID. So an identifier for users, which is considered PII in Europe under GDPR. So what I can do is I can come in here, create a query. And for my example, I'm gonna assume that um, Tobias needs to pull a all pages report. So he just wants to see if all the pages on my website, how many have each been viewed in a certain time period. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select and uh, since the data is denormalized, I have to write a subquery um, for the pages. So I'm going to select the string value of the key page location from every event. So to do that, my query is gonna say select uh, let's see, value.string value from, and then I'm going to unnest the event params column. Make sure that's right. Yeah, event params. Where key is page location. And then I will call that page. And it is saying that uh, it does not recognize it. So let's see here, key, page location, unrecognized, value.string value. It's gotta be in quotes, that's the problem. All right, there we go. So I've got a way of pulling my page and then I'm simply going to count the events that occur and I'm going to restrict my query 
to only look at page view events. Uh, let's see here, I got a group by to get rid of that error. And then I'm going to also order these uh, descending so that the most commonly viewed pages are at the top. Oh, sorry, order by um, views descending. All right, let's see if that worked. And there we go. So in this sample Google Analytics data, I've got all of my URLs on the left here, and then for each, the number of page views. So that's what Tobias needs. I'm going to click Save, and I'm going to save this as a view. Now when you save this view, what I like to do is create a data set, and I uh, usually call this data set Shared Views. And this will just help you stay organized and everything within this data set is going to be an authorized view. Um, so I've got this specific table. Uh, it's actually not a table, but you have to give it a table name. And I'm gonna call this uh, page underscore views. And I'm gonna save that. Uh, data set does not exist. Yes, that is true. I'm going to create a new data set and it's going to be called shared views and then hit create. Okay. Now I can save. And I misspelled the word views. That's okay. Um, so here we go. This is the data set that we just created. Um, I can run a query against it now. And all I have to do is say select star and it will generate a nice all pages report for me. So this is what I want to grant access to Tobias to. He cannot see any sensitive user information and he doesn't have to know how to use unnest to run these complicated queries. So I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to grant Tobias access to the view. And I'm going to do that at the data set level so that as I add other views to this data set, he will continue to receive access to them. The way I'm going to do that is the same way that we granted him access to the user data. I'm going to use a data set tag. So I'm going to come in, select the current project, just like we did in the last video. We've got data sharing settings, and he is on the internal BI team. So I will save that. Now I'm going to test this and show what happens if Tobias tries to query this data before we've authorized the view. So Tobias has now access to the shared views data set and he can see the page views uh, view that I just created. So the access has been granted to the view. Let's see if he can run select star and he cannot for two reasons. First of all, because I had a refresh there, I need to reselect the project to bill against. So I'll do that. And then we will run the example again. I'm going to run a query where we just select star. Now we get a different error. This error is telling me that Tobias does not have access to the Google Analytics data. So this is what I was saying at the beginning. Tobias is the regular view. So if I'm going to share this with somebody, I have to grant them access to the underlying data. In the case of this authorized view, what I want to do is make sure Tobias cannot actually see those user IDs. So I'm going to go back in and I'm going to authorize the view so that the view can access the data and Tobias can only access the view. To do this, what I need to do is go back to my Google Analytics data data set here, and I'm going to click on sharing, and I'm going to click authorize views or authorize data sets. Now, what I'm going to choose to do is authorize all of the data sets in the shared views data set that we created. Um, 
or I want to authorize any view that I create here in the future so that they can all access this data. So I'm going to click authorize data sets. I'm going to choose my shared views data set and add that authorization. Now when I go back to Tobias's window, I can run the query and I can see the results. So Tobias is effectively querying my Google Analytics data, but he cannot see that data and he does not have access to it. All he has access to is the results of the query that I created for him to use. You can authorize views and you can authorize a data set so that all of the views in that data set are authorized at once, which is what I chose to do. Authorized views are very useful for aggregating data where you also want to lock down something that is secure in the data set. However, if you only want to lock down a column or some rows in your underlying data and you don't necessarily need to aggregate it, I wouldn't use authorized views for that use case, but I would actually recommend using policy tags. It is possible to do that with an authorized view, but in the next video, I'll jump into policy tags and show why they're useful for just allowing access to underlying data, but blocking certain sensitive information.